Hey guys, my name is Leafy's. Welcome back to the Redstone Rulebook. Today, we're going to be taking a look at quasi connectivity, Weefy's connectivity, aka basic connectivity, as well as a few bud updates, except that's not really the main topic. The main focus is connectivity. Quasi connectivity and Weefy's connectivity. Yes, I'm calling it that because I don't actually know the proper name for it. Uh, there are concepts that will be very useful in redstone, but also be very annoying And I want to point them out to you because if you aren't familiar with how redstone works These can be very weird and very confusing and this is my goal to explain it as best I can We're gonna be starting off with Weefy's connectivity. Weefy's connectivity is the basic connectivity of droppers Lamps and pistons and it, it, act, it acts as such So we've already learned that if we place a piston and a lever and, and a lever above it or to the side of it If we press either one of these levers the piston will extend as the lever is powering this block, which powers the piston. All well and good. However, here comes Weefy's connectivity. The red block is direct affected area. The purple block is dependent, and the blue block doesn't get affected. What do I mean by this? If I were to place a piston right underneath this piston, it doesn't look like there's anything powering it, right? There looks like there's no nothing, There's this piston should not be activating because the only thing being powered is this piston. However, this touches upon quasi-connectivity, but it's pretty much the basic connectivity rule of Minecraft. Pistons, lamps, and droppers, and dispensers, of course, all have this in common. This actually functions. What's pretty interesting about this is that the piston, it connects with the piston underneath it and powers it as well. And I'll explain more on to how to understand this later, and this also works if the output if the input is on the side, like so. However, a few things to keep in mind. The reason this is blue is because of this piston, connectivity can only go from the source. This piston, the original powered one, is the source, and it can only go down by one. So this piston has an immediate area of one, which means it can power the one below it, but it cannot power this. You can see if we push this, this one does not extend. It is in the no power zone. So there's a bit there's limits to how much you can do with this. However, this one is in the purple zone, and what I mean by that is that it will only extend if the input is coming from the top. So this works, however this does not work, which is why I usually recommend having your input on the top if you need to use this. But when would you need to use this? Well, I'm about to get there. You can see the same thing works with lamps as well. There should be nothing powering this lamp, however, they both get powered. Something to know, uh, it's not the identical thing with lamps, this does not power both lamps. So when would you use this? So right now I have the example with droppers. You're gonna have to trust me that droppers work the same way. And this is actually the T flip flop that we used in the previous video. This is the design for a T flip flop. And the way, the way it works, the reason it works is because this dropper, there, there's nothing powering this dropper. It doesn't look like there's anything powering this dropper. However, this button is powering this dropper, which has Weefy's connectivity to this dropper. So how does this T how does this T flip flop work exactly? So if you were to press this button once, what would happen? Well, this dropper would activate, setting the item into here, and this redstone would be powered, which in turn activates this, and that would go into the hopper and into the bottom dropper. So let's see. And as you can see, it does end up in the bottom dropper. And when we hit it again. These two get activated, but there's nothing in them. However, because of connectivity, this one gets activated as well. And this is a very confusing concept. However, it doesn't it doesn't take much, and I'm sure you'll get you'll understand it eventually. Okay, so this connectivity thing is all well and good, but how would you put it into a real build? Well, here you go. This is called a gem door. It is the very first redstone construction that I learned, and it's very simple. Well, maybe one of the first, one of the first, of course. And it works by flicking this lever, and it's pretty much a flush doorway, and it relies upon Weefy's connectivity to work. So let's take a look at one of the halves. This is one of the halves of a Jeb door. They are very simple to construct and do not require much thought. However, most people don't understand how it works. So we power this lever, flick, uh, sorry, we toggle this lever, powering this repeater, which in turn activates this block. Now, what do you think will happen when this redstone dust is activated. Well, using what we learned from Weefy's connectivity, this piston, and this piston, and this piston, and because there's redstone dust here as well, this piston, so all these four pistons, they'll all extend. And you can see if we click this, if we flip this lever, they do all extend because of connectivity. And why do these ones extend? Well, in short, 
this lever up here is powering this block, which then transfers its connectivity down to these pistons. So if you were to see, this is pretty much the same connectivity we have over there. It's just two pistons with a block with a powered block on top. And Jebdoors revolve around this idea of connectivity. It is again really confusing, but it doesn't take too much. You don't have to think about it ex an extreme amount of time for it to understand. Well, I'm bad at words. So, what is quasi-connectivity? Well, quasi-connectivity has a fundamental theorem. Just like algebra or calculus or whatever, this is the fundamental rule of quasi-connectivity. Anytime you have a scenario where a piston, you want to know if it's being quasi-powered. Well, the way to figure it out is that if, let's just pretend, there is an imaginary lamp above that piston. Anytime there's a powered lamp, a piston below it will always be powered. That is the fundamental rule. That might seem very simple or very complicated, and let me demonstrate. So right now, this works. Okay, we're all well and good. However, the lamp I said is imaginary. This is quasi-connectivity. We have to pretend there's an imaginary lamp here. And any time there's a lamp that's being powered, you have to remember, the block below the lamp will always, the piston below the lamp piston, will always receive power as well. And that sets the foundation for quasi-connectivity. Let's take a look at some examples. Uh, quasi-connectivity allows us to do things like this. Because, let's just pretend, if there was a lamp here, it would be powered. And thus, when this repeater does turn on, it will power the piston as well. Quasi-connectivity. This is a very good way to set up redstone contraptions. You would use this per se if you wanted to set up something where you didn't want this redstone dust to be powered. It's going to get pushed anyway, but yeah, I guess that's not a very good example. But let's say you had a piston uh, right here. You didn't want it to be powered if you placed a block here, but you want to power this piston. Well, quasi-connectivity. That's how it works. Uh, we have a similar example right here. And the interesting thing about quasi-connectivity is that it doesn't go sideways and doesn't go up, but it goes down. So let's take a look at this example right here. We have this. This is very strange. We know this piston is going to turn on because it's right next to the torch. However, another thing that works is that if the... So where's our imaginary lamp? Well, our imaginary lamp is right here. Our imaginary lamp can be pretty much anywhere that will receive power from this redstone torch. It can be here. It can be here, but for the purposes of this example, our imaginary lamp is right here, which means this piston will experience quasi-connectivity. And now we can combine that with Wi-Fi's connectivity, because as you all know, or as I hope I explained, quasi-connectivity does not work sideways. However, Wi-Fi's connectivity works downwards, which means, bear with me here, this piston, when it turns on, will Wi-Fi's connect with this one. So all three of these, by association, will turn on, and this one will not, because it's already being connected once, and you cannot spread your connection if you're not the source. This is extremely confusing. Let's pretend the imaginary lamp was in fact here. That works. Even if there's no piston, quasi-connectivity. So there's quasi-connectivity going on, and there's Wi-Fi's connectivity going on. It, it's kind of confusing, I'm not going to lie. If you're still watching this video and you got confused at this point, I don't blame you. What I mean to say is that the top piston in that example was our imaginary lamp when considering quasi-connectivity. Wi-Fi's connectivity and quasi-connectivity are not different things. Wi-Fi's connectivity is just a simpler, shorter outlet or example of quasi-connectivity. In this example, the top piston was our imaginary lamp, and that is why the bottom one got powered, which is also why regular Wi-Fi's connectivity works. It's all based upon quasi-connectivity. Buds can be very useful, and it's pretty much quasi-connectivity with an interesting benefit. So let's say we have a lamp right here. The lamp is powered, but these pistons aren't turning on. I really personally actually am not sure. Actually, I'm sorry, This there actually has to be a block here. And that is because, so the reason these pistons are not on is because they have to be updated. And BUD stands for Block Update Detector. We're taking a look at block updates. So these pistons are actually powered by this lamp. This one should be powered, but it doesn't know it. 
and that is because redstone is a soft power. Uh, redstone torches and levers hard power blocks, and redstone dust soft powers blocks. As such, this redstone lamp should be quasi connecting to this one, and it is, but because of the soft power, this piston won't extend until it's given an update. So when we update it, we're just updating the block state next to it. So updated, and by association, it extends and updates this one next to it. And similarly, if you were to turn this off, you can see the pistons actually don't know they're supposed to be off. So if we update them, it will turn off. So they don't know it, now they do. They don't know it, now they do. And how do we use buds in our builds? Well, here is something my, that I've sort of invented. Just kidding. Yes, I invented this. It's the detection. So, as you know, we have to place blocks to tell the pistons, hey, you're supposed to be on. Right here is a constant updater. What's going on here? Well, we have the hopper clock from the previous, the observer clock, sorry, from the previous video. So it's always giving a little beeping output. Don't worry, it makes no noise, which is why it's really good. And then we have a hopper. So if this were a solid block, this piston would be all over the place. But the hopper doesn't power it because it's transparent. However, it does change states. And because this hopper goes from lock to unlock to lock to unlock to lock to unlocked, it is always updating, and thus it is always updating the piston. So how can we use this? Well, if I just show you guys, I can build it into this one right here. If I make my observer clock just like so, and then I place a hopper right here, this piston at the bottom will now know when it should be on and when it should be off. And this doesn't look so cool on paper. However, when you put it into demonstration, you can create some very cool things like this. This is a floating button. It doesn't look like it's connected to anything because let's say there was redstone dust uh, let's say let me grab my lever whatever same thing same principle let's say there was redstone dust it wouldn't connect because that's not how it works in minecraft however remember any block or air in place of a lamp will update a piston because quasi connectivity if i put a lamp here it would be powered meaning the piston underneath it by association will be powered as well so instead of a lamp, I have a slab, but quasi-connectivity still works with any block. And so now, because I have this updater going on and off, when I press this button, even though it's not connected to anything, technically, this piston will still update, it will still extend. And this is a bit of an advanced concept, but you can create some really cool magic tricks with a floating button. It doesn't look like it's connected to anything, and yet it does power this piston. So what is the point of all this? Well, I just want to make you aware of quasi-connectivity in Minecraft because it's very interesting and very utilizable in many different designs. So just remember, if you're ever struggling, think about this. Is there anything here that when replaced with a redstone lamp, if, that, if this block is replaced with a redstone lamp, would this redstone lamp be powered? If the answer is yes, any piston underneath that redstone lamp will be powered as well. And that is the basic gist of quasi-connectivity and Wi-Fi's connectivity. So, I hope you all have enjoyed this video. If you have, then be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm really sorry if this was complicated. I'm going to go back to more beginner topics. However, I just want to explain this because it is a very requested feature. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. And peace out.